So welcome, Vino 301 family. We are here today in our series of celebrating women in Maryland wine industry. And I am here with Maureen, who is one of the proprietors of Thanksgiving Farm. Thank you so much for coming, Leslie. I am very happy to be here. I love your tasting room. And so when we bring people here, I always tell them it is the most stately and cleanest tasting room in Maryland, and it is equally inviting. And I always tell people that when they come, it's like cheers, because they'll learn your name, and when you come back, they will always greet you by name. So I think that's a wonderful trade. Um, excellent customer service, but I think that's just who you are at your heart. And we view this as an extension of our home, and we would never have people in our home mm -hmm. and not know their names or not know, introduce them to everybody else that was in our home. So that's the way we handle the tasting yeah. room, and it's worked really well for us. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it is like cheers and it gets very loud. <laughs> But it's always a good time. That's good. That's good. So for those who have never been here to the tasting room in the vineyard, can you tell them a little bit about Thanksgiving Farms and when you started? Sure. Doug bought Thanksgiving Farm in 1996 after he sold a small consulting firm. And at that point, the land had been fallow for 50 years. Mm -hmm. And he thought it was good soil and he wanted to put it back into productive use. But because the, there's so many different slopes, it's not good for field crops. Mm -hmm. And he had made wine during grad school up in Cornell. Okay. To go to your right, which is a great place to make wine. Right. 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 So mm -hmm. they go to the U pick and make wine mm -hmm. for home consumption. So he figured grapes will be happy growing on these slopes. Right. Uh -huh. So we started to plant, and it started out as a home winery. Mm -hmm. And we got some positive feedback on the wine, and in 2006, we decided to apply for our federal and state licenses. So we went from a home winery to a commercial winery. And you have a number of vines under management. How many acres? We have 11 acres mm -hmm. under active management, and our vineyards are planted exclusively in Merlot, Cabernet Franc, and Petit Verdot. We previously had a quite a bit of Cabernet Sauvignon, but they're not happy growing here, and mm -hmm. they've come to accept that fact. So we're moving forward with the three varieties that are right. happy growing here. Well, you do um, something that is very interesting and not uncommon, but interesting in a good way, because you know how sometimes people say interesting and they mean like, well, kind of odd. But no, this is interesting in a good way. So you make a white Cabernet Franc. The we Franc do. Blanc. Our Franc Blanc. Yeah. Um, and our Franc Blanc, we are one of two wineries that we're aware of in the United States, mm -hmm. and we are the first winery that we're aware of in the United States that makes a white cab Franc. And we do that for a couple of reasons. Mm -hmm. Number one, we don't have any white wine grapes, and when we opened the tasting room, customers said, we wish you'd have a white wine. Right. Mm -hmm. We had already known that we could get the juice off the red cab Franc grape and mm -hmm. have it be golden colored. So we decided we would turn that into our white wine. And it's been, very pop yeah. it's been very popular. Yeah, yeah. So, um, can you describe like some of the tasting notes for people who have not experienced it before? Sure. Right now, we are pouring our Franc Blanc from 2017, our Dry Rosé from 2016, and three of our Meritages. We will have dessert wine when we open again in April. Okay. But our Franc Blanc is 100% white juice of the Cabernet Franc grape. Our rosé is 100% free-run juice from the Merlot grape that Doug siphons off using the French process, which they call saigne, which means to bleed. Mm -hmm. So he pumps off some of the juice, and he ferment, we ferment that off the skins for our dry rosé. And then our meritages are all Bordeaux style blends. Mm -hmm. And the white, the Franc Blanc and the Dry Rosé are not oaked at all. Okay. They're fermented in stainless and then fine filtered and bottled. Our meritages are all aged for a year in French oak barrel. Mm -hmm. um, a combination of the twenty the regular meritage is aged in barrels that we've used once before. The reserve meritage is aged in a hundred percent new French oak. And sometimes we also have a another red wine, which we call Farmhouse Red. Mm -hmm. that's, and one, that's very popular. That's very popular. Right. And that's the leftovers in the best sense of mm -hmm. the word. Our Meritage is a targeted blend. We ferment each of the varieties separately, and then we sit down and do a tasting and blend the wines and come up
up with our blend for that year for the Meritage. And then if we if everything doesn't go in the Meritage, mm -hmm. it becomes farmhouse red. Okay. And that gets bottled or aged in barrels that we've used twice before. So that's the least oaky, least tannic mm -hmm. of our red wines. And all your grapes are estate grapes, so you don't purchase grapes. We don't purchase grapes. grapes or juices or anything. It's 100% what we grow here. So our volume and our blends vary from year to year depending on what Mother Nature gives us. Right. And I should tell everyone, we, you know, we just started a conversation because talking to you is like, we're the, we're the old friends. We are the old friends. It's, it's been a long time, yes. Um, but Thanksgiving Farm is located in Harwood, Maryland, which is in southern Anne Arundel County. And um, you are actually on a historic site. We are. And uh, it is a lovely piece of property. When people first pull up, you would see the high school, southern high school to your right. Yes. And then you would see the cattle. Was the Catterton Farm in right. front of ours, which is Progressive Farm. And they mm -hmm. do field crops and cattle and hogs. And that farm and our farm were originally one parcel until 1953 when it was subdivided. Okay. And so then when people come, because I know sometimes... It's intimidating. Right. And, and they get turned around, but you have the sign out front. We have a sign. They just drive past that. Right. And then it's like this awakening of the vineyard when you get to the beginning, the entrance. If they use the Google directions to mm -hmm. Thanksgiving Farm Winery, it takes you right to our parking lot. Oh, good. <coughs> good. Good. Waze has gotten much better too. Mm -hmm. um, there are some services that take people to one of the subdivisions off one of the next major yeah. roads down, mm -hmm. yes, and direct them to walk up the hill through the woods. Um, and then there's another set of map, <laughs> online map directions that have, tell people to park at the Catterton Farm and walk right. the next quarter of a mile back. No. There was one time. There was a bachelorette. You were here, you were here yes, that day. That was horrible. That was horrible because they were in their cute little dresses. And high heels. And high heels. And the, um, the limo wouldn't come back. That is crazy. It was. Yeah. Because yeah. the road's, the road is narrow and grindy, right. but right. it's not. But you can get a limo back here. Absolutely. Yeah, you definitely. And we can, you can get a bus back here. Yes. You can. Yeah. Because our, our vehicles come back here. Right. And we've had, uh, we do ag tours for the Soil Conservation District and things like that and Leadership Anne Arundel and they mm -hmm. come on a regular bus. Yeah. So it is possible. So your background, very similar to other women who are in the Maryland wine industry, did not start in wine. Yeah. You, you have a career in the legal profession. You still have a career in the legal profession. So well, I'm actually doing regulatory work. Regulatory work. Okay. So why wine? How did you, how did you fall into wine? Um, I always drank wine. Good. Um, always <laughs> drank wine. Um, and when I married Doug in 2003, he had a home winery. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we, we were growing The wine came with the man. The wine came with the man. <laughs> as did the three-quarter wrap around porch, which <laughs> I think is a big selling. It, it, it was. It was a big mm -hmm. selling point for moving <laughs> and giving up my license to practice law. Right, because you're from New Jersey. I'm from New Jersey. Jersey. Moved down here to Right, Maryland. and I decided I opted not to take the bar exam again at that age, at okay. 53. Well, it seems like you're a natural in the wine industry. We have had so much fun, and we really enjoy it, and we never anticipated how much fun the tasting room would be. Mm -hmm. And what a wonderful opportunity it is to meet nice, happy people every weekend. Unhappy people don't come taste wine. Yeah, they don't. They, they drink scotch. <laughs> I'm just joking. <laughs> but no, I think, do you, I mean, looking back at it now, do you, did you see yourself here and having a tasting room and this part in your life? Um, before I married Doug? Mm -hmm. No. Mm -hmm. My grandparents grew up in Ireland and were farmers, and my grandfather always said that farming, living on a farm, was the best thing that anybody could do. But no, I never anticipated living on a farm and mm -hmm. growing, growing right. a crop and making wine, no. But it's been great right. fun. Yeah, he was right. He was right. He was definitely right. Grandpa was right. So where do you see the role of women in um, the wine industry in America? I think it depends. It, varies from winery to winery. 
You are so right about that. I mean, and that's one of the things I love best about the Maryland wine industry. Everybody has their own business model. Everybody mm -hmm. has their own goals and objectives, and everybody runs their business a little bit differently. Mm -hmm. I think that that is what makes it unique. Right. But it is also what binds together. Together, right. Um, you know, some women, I like working in the vineyards certain times of the year. Mm -hmm. I don't like pruning because that makes me, it's too important. Mm -hmm. But I enjoy taking care of the plants. I enjoy harvest. I love being in the tasting room. Doug does all the winemaking. Okay. You know, that's just not my skill set. Right, right. No, I understand. So, but I know there are women who do that. Yes, there are, there are a number of women that are expanding into that field and are very good at it. Yes, absolutely. Very, very, very good at it. Very good at it. So if someone was to come to Thanksgiving Farms, what would they expect to experience? We would do a tasting. Doug or I are always here and we have a great group of people. Mm -hmm. Our tasting room team is fantastic. And we would walk you through each of the wines. A tasting takes about an hour here, um, sometimes longer depending on the, the questions and the back and forth. Right. But it takes at least an hour. We explain each of the wines. We explain our grape growing practices, our winemaking practices, a little bit about each of the wines, a little bit of the history of the farm mm -hmm. because it is an historic site. And um, then people can enjoy a glass of wine at the bar. We have a picnic area outside mm -hmm. in the summer where you can bring your own food and sit outside and enjoy a bottle or a glass of wine and spend some time in the country. Uh, we also have another table inside where we can accommodate groups of 10. Mm -hmm. And then if we're really crowded, we have seating on the porch now and we can move people up there. And sometimes we hope to do some small dinners up there in the spring yes. in the fall. It won't be the spring. Day jobs are too busy. Yeah. Um, one last thing. Should people make an appointment? Do you recommend that? I know you have open hours on Saturdays. We have open hours on Saturdays and Sundays from 1 to 5. Um, if you're coming with a large group, making an appointment is much better. Right. Because this way we can sure to save a spot for you that will accommodate mm -hmm. your group comfortably. That is great. Well, thank you, Maureen, so much for your time. Well, you're, the pleasure is all mine, Leslie, and thank you for including us in this wonderful little project you're working on. You're welcome. You're very much welcome, and I look forward to being here this spring with you guys. And we always are delighted to see you. Right. With or without it. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> thank you. Well, thank you again, the Avino 301 family, for watching this video, and we will chat with you.